From the dragon of death in Argentina to the giant ancient shark that ate their siblings in the womb, here are some surprising things you didn't know about prehistoric creatures. The Dragon Nightmare Scientists in South America have discovered the largest species of pterosaur on the continent. In Argentina's province of Mendoza, in an area known as the Plotier Formation, paleontologists revealed the Dragon of Death. It is an enormous fossil of a creature that once ruled the skies of this planet. Its wingspan was around 30 feet wide, meaning it was roughly the size of a small airplane. Researchers confirmed the new fossils belong to a family of pterosaurs called Asdarkids. They lived at the very end of the Cretaceous period, going extinct 66 million years ago along with the rest of the dinosaurs. If it hadn't been for that pesky asteroid, the skies would most likely still be ruled by real-life dragons today. The newly discovered creature has been named Thanatos Dracon, which translates to Dragon of Death in Greek. It had a giant skull, an extremely long neck, and a robust body. Scientists didn't just find one of them, they found a pair. One of them was a little smaller than the other, but they both died at the same time. It looks like they may have been part of a family group, maybe a mother and her little dragon baby. Finding pterosaur bones is a fairly rare occurrence. Like other flying creatures, they had extremely fragile bones. They didn't fossilize nearly as well as bigger dinosaurs with denser bones. This means there could be all kinds of crazy flying dinosaurs that have never been found. Megalodon Cannibal Babies The Megalodon lived between 15 and 3.6 million years ago. It was the largest predatory shark known to science, reaching a whopping size of around 60 feet in length. It was over twice as big as a great white, maybe even a bit bigger than that. Although the shark has been made extremely famous in recent years thanks to some big movies like The Meg, scientists still don't know that much about the Megalodon. The Megalodon was just like modern sharks in that it had a skeleton made of soft cartilage. Only a few pieces of the shark's body were able to mineralize and become fossils, primarily its teeth, its skull, and its spine. For that reason, scientists have never found a full Megalodon body. They have to study the creatures based on their teeth and what few pieces of skull are recovered. Professor Kenshu Shimada from DePaul University recently took a look at the perfectly preserved spine of an extinct megalodon. He and his team were able to deduce that megalodons likely gave birth to live babies about six feet long. The babies were bigger than most adult humans. The thing that stumped scientists was that they couldn't understand how the babies grew so big inside the womb. But then a light switch went off. The team knew one thing for sure. The babies must have been eating a lot of food in the womb. Their best guess is that while inside their mother, growing baby megalodons likely ate their unborn siblings. In essence, megalodon babies were ferocious little cannibals. And now for number 8. But first, it's shout out time! I want to give a big thank you to Berto Di Velas and Alex Cox for supporting this channel. Thank you so much! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these. The Epic Journey 252 million years ago, a disaster struck our planet. Intense volcanic eruptions triggered runaway global warming, leading to the doom of an estimated 90% of all living species. It was the Permian extinction event, and it devastated life on Earth. Recently, scientists in South Africa discovered a harrowing tale from the days of the extinction. They found a beast that migrated halfway around the world in a desperate attempt to survive the ongoing destruction. The creature is called Inostrancivia. It was an apex predator, a forerunner to the saber-toothed cat. It was roughly the size of a tiger and would have easily eaten a few humans for a midnight snack. It was mostly known for fossils excavated in Russia, but now its remains have been found in South Africa too. Its fossils, discovered in its homeland and then 7,000 miles away, suggest the enormous predator migrated away from Siberia to escape the extinction. Paleontologist Christian Kamerer from the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences said it filled the ecological niche of top predator in South Africa. That's because by the time it arrived, the top predators had already gone extinct. Sadly, Inostrancivia went extinct as well. But it went on an epic journey across almost the entire world to try and avoid it. 
The big cat lived at the epicenter of the destruction. Volcanism triggered unimaginable lava flows across massive parts of Siberia and Eurasia. The feisty proto-mammal likely fled a region that was slowly but surely being enveloped by liquid lava. Temperatures would have been extremely hot, with oxygen being sucked out of the seas and atmosphere. It walked 7,000 miles before the extinction finally caught up with it. As a side note, you might be interested to know that scientists have made parallels between the Permian extinction and the climate changes we are experiencing right now. Earth could be walking right into another mass extinction event. Dinosaur Hunters When you think about dinosaurs, you think about giant predators feasting on everything they set their eyes on. Most people imagine creatures like raptors and tyrannosaurs with no natural predators, but an unusual find in China has changed that story. Paleontologists discovered some very early mammals that were so ferocious they hunted dinosaurs. Researchers found the fossil of a creature not too different from a badger, only extremely large. Its fossil was found intertwined with the fossil of a slightly larger dinosaur. The mammal appeared to have been in the middle of chowing down on the dinosaur when they both died in a volcanic flow. The lava flow captured them in a kind of prehistoric snapshot. The fossils reveal that the mammal was looming over the dinosaur, gripping the dino with its paws as it took a bite out. This isn't the first proof that mammals dined on dinosaurs. There have been other examples of mammal fossils with dinosaur remains in their guts. The evidence points to mammals preying on dinosaurs much larger than themselves. They weren't just scavengers. They were actively hunting dinosaurs. This has totally changed the notion that dinosaurs ruled the world and that mammals cowered in the shadows. The Crocs of Yesterday Crocodiles are not dinosaurs, but they are as old as dinosaurs. They've been around in one form or another for tens of millions of years. Until very recently, there were an insane number of different kinds of crocodiles roaming the world. Scientists recently identified 14 closely related crocodiles that lived 5 million years ago. The extinct crocodiles lived in the waterways of the Amazon. Researchers were studying a wealth of fossilized crocodiles in the Urumaco region of Venezuela when they found two new species. They were ancient caimans that grew to over 12 feet in length. As the investigation continued, scientists found even more extinct creatures. They soon identified every single known family of living crocodile species. What I mean is that they found ancient examples of alligators, caimans, and crocodiles, plus a unique type of crocodilian that only lives in Southeast Asia, known as the Gavialidae. This has been a big shock to the paleontological community because all these different species of crocodile lived in the same place. Researchers think although they lived in close proximity to one another, they were likely specialized feeders. The true crocodiles would have feasted on massive rodents and their smaller cousins, whereas beasts like gharials likely ate fish. Other species would have hunted snails and crabs. All these different species went extinct at the same time 5 million years ago. It wasn't climate change or an extinction event, though. It was a tectonic event that changed the course of the rivers in the Amazon, causing all the crocs to perish. Warm-blooded dinosaurs New research has been published in Science Advances that's shocking the world. Ever since dinosaurs were discovered to be oversized reptiles, scientists have always assumed they were cold-blooded animals. But the new research is suggesting that's not true. Dinosaurs were warm-blooded, not cold-blooded. Researchers investigating fossilized eggshells found that dinosaurs had warmer body temperatures than their surroundings. The eggshells that were tested belonged to Troodon and Megalulithus, two dinosaurs you would not want to mess with. Experts used a scientific process called clumped isotope heliothermometry to look at the oxygen-carbon atoms in the eggshells. Then they compared their findings to eggshells laid by cold-blooded invertebrates in the same area. The results show that dinosaurs had much warmer blood than the invertebrates. This is a big deal because it shows dinosaurs weren't just large reptiles. It also makes sense when you know the dinosaurs were covered in feathers. They weren't scaly monsters like what you see in Jurassic Park. Dinosaurs were more like giant chickens or huge peacocks. They were warm-blooded and evolved feathers for insulation, just like modern birds. 
the evolution of butterflies. A team of scientists recently constructed the biggest butterfly tree of life ever. They put together an extensive history of the evolution of everyone's favorite flying bugs. What they discovered is that the very first butterflies evolved 100 million years ago in North America, most likely from ancient moths. The team led by Akito Kawahara at the Florida Museum of Natural History sequenced the genes from nearly 2,300 species of butterflies. These butterflies came from 90 countries, representing almost 100% of all recognized genuses. After compiling all the data, scientists were able to confirm that every single known species of butterfly originated from an origin species 101.4 million years ago. Up until then, there were no butterflies, only moths, which people don't have quite as much of a soft spot for. While moths and butterflies might look a little similar, moths are usually seen as creepy and butterflies are seen as beautiful. The truth is that all butterflies came from their creepy ancestors, specifically from nocturnal moths. After butterflies evolved, they slowly started to disperse. They spread into South America, then migrated to Antarctica. By the time Pangaea, the ancient supercontinent, started to split apart 85 million years ago, butterflies had made it all the way to Australia. The only thing scientists don't know is why butterflies spread to almost every part of the world except the Middle East. It's the only place that butterflies seem to have completely ignored over the past 100 billion years. Do you have any theories? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe while you're at it. The Dino Dung Rush Did you know that in the 1900s there was a Dino Dung Gold Rush? Starting in the early 1850s, miners flocked to Cambridgeshire in England. They weren't looking for gold or silver or gems. They were hoping to mine dinosaur poop. The bizarre craze came about because there was an increase in demand for fertilizer after the nightmare that was the Napoleonic Wars. People were using corpses ground into muck for fertilizer. They were also using fossilized feces, which was discovered about 50 years earlier by famous English paleontologist Mary Anning. She was the first one who realized that fossilized coprolites, aka fossilized feces, could be used to help grow crops. Dinosaur scat is not an easy thing to find. Most examples are very small, which made it so unusual that miners were able to devote so much time to finding them. One of the biggest examples of a coprolite is just over two feet long. It's a massive piece of fossilized dung believed to have been deposited by a T-Rex. In 1845, botanist John Stevens Henslow from Cambridge published an article discussing the phosphate content of fossilized dinosaur scat. This led to a wave of miners venturing to Cambridgeshire in search of riches. Nobody knows how much fossilized feces was excavated, but the craze lasted nearly 30 years. The hunt for coprolites was what ultimately led to the invention of artificial fertilizers. Even today, dinosaur poo is worth an absurd amount of money. An auction recently saw a collector pay over $10,000 for a small bit of fossilized feces from 6 million years ago. Deaf and Sluggish Ankylosaur is one of the most famous dinosaurs, an herbivore that was covered in bony plates and dangerous spikes. It had a massive club for a tail, which it could use to bash the shins of carnivores. The biggest ankylosaur could grow to around 24 feet long, moving slowly across the forest like a living tank. Scientists think they lived in groups, though some may have preferred a life of solitude. It was during a recent investigation of ankylosaur brain cases that scientists learned something surprising. It turns out ankylosaur was deaf. Fossilized brain cases are very valuable to researchers because they once housed the brain of a specific animal. This is where scientists can look at all the neurosensory tissue, like the inner ears of a dinosaur, to see what its auditory capacity was. In the case of Ankylosaur, it had some of the worst hearing of any dinosaur that ever lived. Scientists say it had a super small legina, which is the part of the inner ear responsible for hearing. This dinosaur, although it was obviously a serious beast covered in armor, most likely didn't hear much. Its hearing was likely so bad, it wouldn't have heard a predator sneaking up on it. It's no wonder the Ankylosaur evolved to be completely covered in powerful armor. The Weak Predator 
A new study has revealed that although some ancient reptiles may have been big and scary, they didn't have a very strong bite to back up their bark. A recent study of Sarosuchus showed that despite its massive teeth and huge head, it had a piddly bite. The enormous reptile couldn't even crunch through bones like the dinosaurs that came after it, such as the T-Rex. Now, scientists are wondering how many huge carnivores were really weaklings. Sarosuchus lived 230 million years ago. Paleontologists at the University of Birmingham recreated its skull based on preserved fossil specimens. This creature was a whopping 24 feet long from snout to tail. Scientists assumed it was a powerful monstrosity, just like other massive crocodile-like animals. But when they tested its bite force, they found the humongous beast had a bite similar to a modern gharial. It was barely strong enough to kill its prey. What does all this information mean? Experts say Sarosuchus was still a terrifying creature, one you wouldn't want to mess with. But it probably didn't eat in the same way as crocodiles that came later. It likely nibbled on the soft parts of animals it hunted rather than gobbling them up whole. Thanks for watching! Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed! Sea Monsters in North America 300 million years ago, parts of North America were covered by a shallow tropical sea. At the time, the Mason Creek area in what is now Illinois was home to numerous soft-bodied animals. One of the most bizarre discoveries scientists have made there is the Tully Monster. The creature resembles a slug at first glance, but it had a long, thin appendage with what looked like grasping claws where you would expect its mouth to be and its eyes were located at the end of stalks that protruded from its body. It's downright weird, looking like a collection of leftover sea creature parts. And for decades since its discovery, scientists have been trying to figure out exactly what it was. They can't seem to agree on whether it was a vertebrate, meaning it had a backbone, or an invertebrate, meaning it didn't have one. In 2016, a group of researchers claimed to have finally solved the mystery. They argued that the Tully monster was a vertebrate because its eyes have more in common with animals who have backbones. The team concluded that the creature is a jawless fish that's distantly related to modern-day lampreys. But another group of experts identified several invertebrates who also have the eye features that the other scientists used for classifying the creature, calling the accuracy of their findings into question. It seems as though the more researchers look into the matter, the more confusing it gets and they are left with more questions than answers. Bugs were gigantic. Some of the largest insects that ever existed were giant dragonfly-like predators called griffinflies. They looked a lot like modern-day dragonflies, but are only distantly related to them and were much bigger, with bodies measuring over a foot and a half long and with wingspans of up to two and a half feet. These primitive insects appeared on the fossil record between 317 million and 247 million years ago. They lived before the dinosaurs, but didn't exist for very long. There are two known griffinfly species, both of which were identified based on fossils found in North America. Griffinflies evolved to their massive size because the atmosphere's oxygen content was much higher at the time. This made breathing much easier than it is for today's insects and caused them to grow to be enormous. These freakishly huge creatures died out during the end Permian extinction event. It was the most devastating of the five known extinction events to happen on Earth and wiped out around 90% of the planet's species. Known as the Great Dying, it's one of the few extinction events that saw a massive die-off of insects. The world's oxygen levels decreased and insects never grew to their ancestors' enormous size, which I'm kind of okay with. Unicorns were real. Unicorns back in the day were real to a certain extent. A prehistoric creature nicknamed the Siberian Unicorn looked nothing like the mythical creatures we picture in our minds. As an ancient rhino species, it was fatter and furrier than the unicorn of modern imagination, but it did have an enormous horn. Scientists originally thought that the Siberian Unicorn went extinct at least 100,000 years ago. But a 2016 study found that the animal was still roaming the Earth as recently as 39,000 years ago, meaning it lived alongside Neanderthals and ancient humans. But how did the species survive for so long? The study was based on a fossilized specimen found in Kazakhstan. Researcher Andrei Shpansky told CNN that the region was probably a refuge of sorts for the Siberian unicorn. 
enabling it to continue to thrive after it died out elsewhere. But this was just the beginning of all the questions experts still need to answer. They are hoping to figure out what caused the Siberian unicorn to go extinct, if migration played a role in its survival, and if climate change had anything to do with it dying out. There are only about five species of rhinos living today, but there have been as many as 250 species throughout different points in time. The Siberian unicorn lived in an area that spans from modern-day southwestern Russia and Ukraine to Siberia and Kazakhstan. It weighed as much as 3.9 tons, up to two times the size of a modern-day rhino, and it was a fast runner, despite its colossal proportions. Experts believe, based on how rhinos behave now, that the Siberian unicorn may have been a rare and solitary animal. There are no signs that people hunted them to extinction, but their low population numbers may have played a role, and climate change is a suspected factor. Dinosaurs had feathers Dinosaurs started to look more bird-like starting in 1964, when a researcher hypothesized that a species called Deinonychus was warm-blooded based on its fossil. In 1979, scientist John McLaughlin suggested in his book that there were many warm-blooded and feathered dinosaurs, and the idea continued to spread from there. The first solid evidence of dinosaurs having feathers came during the 1990s, with the discovery of some perfectly preserved specimens in China. This proved that dinosaurs were the ancestors of today's birds. More feathered dinosaurs have been found since then, but experts are still trying to figure out how many dinosaurs actually had feathers, and when feathers first appeared. A study found that most feathered dinosaurs came from the meat-eating theropod branch of the family tree. Some experts believe that all dinosaurs had at least some feathers, but some species may have only had a few feathers, which are unlikely to be preserved in their fossils. Other scientists think that many dinosaurs had feather-like structures, but only those closest related to modern birds had true feathers. Recent research suggests that the earliest dinosaurs were featherless, or if they did have feathers, the feathers didn't fossilize. But the evidence indicates that certain species had scaly coverings instead of feathers, so scientists still have a lot to learn about this. Stay tuned, because their findings are likely to change in the future as more discoveries are made. Whales did not always live in the ocean. Most modern animals started out as ocean dwellers and eventually made their way to land. But the earliest ancestors of modern whales did the opposite. Equipped with long skulls and carnivorous teeth, these land-dwelling creatures didn't look much like whales at first glance. But their skulls strongly resemble those of today's whales, and their ear bone had a feature that is unique to cetaceans. Pachycetus was one of the first whales. This four-footed animal lived along the shore of a shallow ocean called the Tethys Sea in what is now Pakistan. Measuring anywhere from one to two meters long, it was roughly the size of a wolf. It looked more like a hoofed animal than a sea creature. Whales began adapting to an aquatic environment around 50 million years ago, when they entered the water in search of food or to hide from predators. As they evolved, their legs grew smaller and their tails became longer and more muscular. Take, for example, Bacillosaurus, a prehistoric species that flourished around 37 million years ago. It had two small, perfectly developed hind legs that it did not use for swimming, and which were relatively useless. Eventually, these limbs disappeared entirely. It took only 10 million years for whales to adapt completely to a marine environment. This may seem like a long time, but from an evolutionary perspective, it's a very fast transition. Ancient bears make modern bears look small. The idea of crossing paths with an angry grizzly bear or a polar bear is terrifying to most people. But imagine being in the direct path of a bear that stands at 12 feet tall on its hind legs and barrels at you at up to 40 miles per hour. That's what you would have had to deal with in an encounter with the giant short-faced bear, the fastest running bear and one of the largest land animals that ever lived. Armed with longer legs than today's bears and straight forward-facing toes, these terrifying creatures moved with impressive speed despite their massive size. These guys weighed up to 3,500 pounds. There were North American and South American species, and they were very different from each other. South American short-faced bears shrunk over time. Scientists aren't sure what they ate, but think that a dwindling food supply may be to blame for these apex predators getting smaller. They may have also faced increased competition as other animals evolved and got bigger. 
North American short-faced bears, on the other hand, grew larger over time. This may have given them the advantage of being able to scare off other predators from their meal. The reasons why either bear went extinct are unknown, but scientists think it had to do with increased competition for food. Dinosaurs performed mating dances Scientists have long suspected that as ancestors of modern birds, dinosaurs performed mating dances. They finally found evidence of this in 2016, when paleontologists discovered scrape marks left behind by dinosaurs in Colorado. Found in 100 million year old sandstone, the 50 or so marks look a lot like the patterns left behind by birds who are looking for a partner. A team of researchers ruled out the possibilities of the marks representing a nest or foraging for food or water. Speaking with The Guardian, lead scientist Martin Lockley said that he thinks dinosaurs made vocal sounds while mating, just as modern birds do. The team failed to determine what dinosaur species made the scrape marks, but they suspect that the Acrocanthosaurus may be responsible. Measuring up to 35 feet long and weighing between 5 and 6 tons, this giant theropod was around the same size as the Tyrannosaurus rex. Now that they think they've figured out dinosaur foreplay, scientists are trying to learn more about how they actually mated. Duckbill Dinosaurs Around 70 million years ago, a group of plant-eating dinosaurs called hadrosaurs roamed the areas that are now Europe, Asia, and the Americas. These so-called duckbill dinosaurs are best known for the flat, beak-like appearance of the bones in their snout. They also had webbed front feet. Duckbill dinosaurs had bulky bodies. Scientists think that they were able to run on two feet, but that they usually used all four. One of the most interesting duckbill dinosaurs is the Hypacrosaurus, a type that was discovered in 1910. There are two known species based on fossils found in Alberta, Canada, and Montana. When the Hypacrosaurus was first discovered, it was the second largest known dinosaur next to the Tyrannosaurus rex. Many larger dinosaurs have been discovered since then, but at 30 feet long and up to 4.4 tons, the creature was formidable in its own right. Writing for Scientific American in 2018, paleontologist Darren Nash pointed out that it's a common misconception to assume that duckbilled dinosaurs were actually duckbilled. Their nickname is based on the shape of their bones, without factoring in what they might have looked like with cartilage, muscle, and other tissues. In fact, evidence shows that these dinosaurs probably had a large downturned bill that concealed the flattened shape of its bones. Global warming caused dwarfism. Around 55 million years ago, the Earth experienced an extreme warming period, or hyperthermal, called the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, or PETM. Global temperatures rose between 9 and 14 degrees over a 160,000-year period. During that time, primates, horses, deer, and other mammals shrunk. In 2013, scientists found that this mammal dwarfing happened at least one other time during a smaller global warming event around 53 million years ago. Known as the Eocene Thermal Maximum II, it lasted for around 80,000 years. It also caused animals to shrink, but not as much as they did in the first warming event. Scientists say it's happening now as well, in our current era of climate change, according to a recent study. Over a 23-year period from 1976 to 1999, Scientists observed changes in the body size of a bird called the mountain wagtail. They found that lighter birds were replacing heavier ones, and that they are better at handling hot temperatures. This indicates that evolution is causing these changes to help the birds survive the rapidly changing climate. Other studies have yielded similar findings, but there is no saying how each animal will respond to the rising global temperature. By learning more about how animals were affected in the past, experts may be able to better predict what to expect in the future. The Styracosaurus The Styracosaurus is one of the more unusual dinosaurs that ever lived. Its name translates roughly to spiked lizard. It had an extremely impressive crown on its head made of spikes. Picture a triceratops except with significantly more horns. In fact, the Styracosaurus is a relative of the triceratops, with both of them coming from a family of creatures known as ceratopsian, or horned or frilled dinosaurs. But out of all the ceratopsian monsters, the Styracosaurus was by far the one with the most distinctive skull. 
It had an extremely long horn over two feet long that stuck out of its nose, and its frill, the great plate rising above its eyes, had anywhere from four to six extra horns. It was a lot of horns for just one animal, with the experts saying it probably had something to do with attracting mates. The dinosaurs with the more impressive head displays had a better chance of pairing up with a female. Besides just having a lot of horns, the Styracosaurus was a heavy beast. It weighed up to 6,000 pounds, though that made it kind of small compared to the Triceratops, which weighed up to 26,000 pounds. This makes sense considering the Styracosaurus lived on Earth about 10 million years before the frilled dinosaurs most people are familiar with, about 75 million years ago. This means it evolved into the more famous Triceratops, heavier and meaner, right before the Triceratops was annihilated by the great asteroid. Longisquama The Longisquama in Cygnus is one of the strangest reptiles that has ever been discovered by scientists. Even after they found it, they couldn't agree on what kind of creature it was. They first thought it was some kind of animal that lived in the trees, perhaps related to the earliest birds. The reason it's so unique is that it has strange skin appendages on its back that almost look like feathers, but aren't actually feathers. After quite a bit of research, scientists were able to identify the Longisquama as a type of reptile. It lived in the mid-Triassic, 235 million years before today. Its fossils have been found only in the Madigen Formation, which is located in the country of Kurdistan. The remote and secluded location has made it difficult for paleontologists to do much research. However, the creatures they have found here, at least the ones that they have identified and put in the fossil record, have mostly been bizarre reptiles and fish from the Triassic. The entire area was probably a lush forest, but today it's little more than a desert. As for the weird appendages on this strange reptile, they made it look like any ordinary lizard you would see in the jungle today, except with six or seven massive feather-like structures sticking out of its back. They looked like mini hockey sticks, and scientists still can't figure out what they were used for. Modern paleontologists believe these structures could be some kind of bizarre missing link connecting birds and reptiles. But for now, it's kind of a mystery. Carnotaurus the Carnotaurus was a very strange type of dinosaur known as a theropod, and believe it or not, there has only been one specimen uncovered anywhere on the planet. But despite there only being a single skeleton ever found of this creature, it was discovered in such great condition that scientists were able to recreate what it looked like. Scientists even know that it had scaly skin and absolutely no feathers. The weirdest part about the Carnotaurus is that it had teeny tiny forelimbs. Think about the T-Rex and its alleged tiny little arms. Well, the Carnotaurus' arms were even tinier. They were literally useless, like if your hands grew out of your armpits with nothing in the middle. It could use them for pretty much nothing, which has boggled scientists who can't figure out why it had arms at all if it couldn't use them. The single specimen of the Carnotaurus had some of its skin still preserved, and with it, scientists were able to find out a lot about the monster. Dr. Phil Bell from the University of New England likened the creature's flesh to that of the thorny devil in Australia. It was completely covered in scales with small conical studs. It would have been extremely bumpy to touch and may even have cut your hand. Eternal Sleeping Dinosaur 125 million years ago, a pair of dinosaurs fell asleep inside of an underground burrow. They fell asleep and never woke up as they were buried alive after a volcanic eruption. They then remained undiscovered, sleeping peacefully until paleontologists in China dug them up. They found these two creatures in pristine condition, with each dino being about four feet long. They were given an extremely long name in Chinese, and it translates roughly to the eternal sleeper. The two specimens can be found today at the Paleontological Museum of Liaoning, in the same province where they were originally discovered. A team of researchers from Argentina and Belgium recently took great interest in the eternal sleepers and did a bit of investigating. As it turns out, they were very unique in the world of dinosaurs. They may have been an early type of herbivore that walked on two legs, ran extremely quickly, and burrowed deep in the earth. This is strange because most dinosaurs weren't really burrowing animals. They preferred to lumber around on land, throwing their weight around. These critters were quite different. Senior researcher Pascal Goydefrot even compared them to rabbits. 
But perhaps what's really interesting is that there may have been significantly more critters just like these. It's just that their fossils have never been found. Because of the rare circumstance in which the two dinos were preserved in their underground nests, they have been some of the only burrowing creatures ever uncovered from the days of the dinosaurs. Erythrosuchus The Erythrosuchus was one of the biggest predators in South Africa during the Middle Triassic. And while this creature is certainly related to the dinosaurs, it was its own unique type of animal called an archosauriform reptile. It was a carnivore that could grow 15 feet long, huge and powerful but quite slow and cumbersome. It had thick muscles, thick bones, and trudged slowly over land. It couldn't even walk very fast. But this wasn't a big problem millions of years ago because the herbivores couldn't move very quickly either. It was basically a bunch of oversized carnivores hobbling after oversized plant eaters. Perhaps the weirdest part about the Erythrosuchus is simply the way it looked. Imagine a huge crocodile except with the head of a dinosaur. That's basically what we're talking about here. A freak of nature with dinosaur teeth and an enormous body of a huge reptile. Unfortunately, not much is known about the behavior of this huge beast. Only a handful of skeletons have ever been found, and none of them have been complete. The best guess scientists have is that it ambushed its prey. It probably hung out near rivers and in the bushes, where it could chomp on other animals when they strolled by. What's your favorite dinosaur? Do you wish that they were still around? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about prehistoric creatures. Hong Yu Chowi The bizarre fossil of the prehistoric fish called Hong Yu Chowi may just be changing our understanding of how creatures moved from the sea to the land. This curious fish is one of the only fish ever discovered that share several key features with land animals. And yet all the same, scientists say it's only slightly related to land animals, and so it still doesn't paint a complete picture. As you may already know, it was about 360 million years ago when a group of fish flopped out of the water, grew four legs, and started wandering around on land. These four-legged fish turned into reptiles, amphibians, mammals, and ultimately humans. But there are some serious links missing between fish and reptiles, and the Hong Yu Chowi is just one piece of a larger puzzle. First of all, this fish lived somewhere between 370 and 360 million years ago. It was discovered in 2002 in China by researchers with the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology. Ever since, researchers have been trying to figure out where the fish fits into the family tree. The problem is that the fish had some strange features, such as a shoulder girdle, something some of the earliest land animals had. It also had special gill support, a biological feature of animals as they transitioned away from using gills. Still, the fish didn't actually have any legs. Scientists have still never found the exact animal that was in the middle of the transition, sprouting legs to crawl out of the water. The Pentaceratops The Pentaceratops was kind of like the Triceratops. Its name means five-horned face, whereas the Triceratops means three-horned face. Get it? The weirdest part is that both creatures really only had three main horns. Each prehistoric beast had a pair of horns over its eyes, with a smaller one on the end of its nose. In the case of the Pentaceratops, it had two very small outgrowths on its cheekbones, technically meaning it had five horns instead of three. But the biggest difference between the Pentaceratops and the other dinosaurs of its kind was just how massive its head was. It had one of the largest skulls of any dinosaur that has ever lived on the planet. Get ready to have your mind blown, because the Pentaceratops had a head on average of 10 feet in length. Its head was absolutely gigantic. It also ruled the area of what is today New Mexico at the end of the Cretaceous period, about 75 million years ago. There were other types of horn-faced dinosaurs in Mexico, but the Pentaceratops was so big and so menacing that it ruled most of the American Southwest. If you want to know why this dinosaur had such a huge head, scientists say it probably had something to do with sexual selection. At some point, the ornaments, meaning horns on their heads, became so attractive to females that dinosaurs with the bigger heads and more shapely horns simply bred far more often. This meant that the males with the larger heads had babies with equally large heads, passing the gene along until all of them had ridiculously large noggins. The Crab Platypus One of the weirdest things that ever existed is something called a crab platypus. 
It was a horrible thing with a hodgepodge of seemingly random body parts. And yet despite this, it was only the size of a quarter. It was absolutely tiny and technically a crab. But it lived 95 million years ago and was on an offshoot branch stemming from the crab family tree. In other words, it was an outcast. Javier Luque from Yale University called its discovery one of the most exciting fossil finds of the past decade. The crab platypus was found in Colombia in 2005, but others have since been dug up in places like Wyoming and Morocco. The little crab lived all over the world. And here's why it was so weird. It had giant eyes but no eye sockets. It had bent claws, mouth parts that looked like shrimp legs, and finally a tail just about as long as its body. To the casual observer, it wasn't much of a crab at all. Scientists still don't know what happened to it or why it deviated so far from the rest of the crabs, like the ones we still have today. Dolocaris The Dolocaris was an invertebrate that lived during the Jurassic period. It also happened to look like a miniature alien spacecraft. It had a small body, giant eyeballs, and weird grappling appendages that you'd expect to see dropping from some kind of alien vessel floating through space. But the biggest mystery is that scientists can't properly identify it. Some say it's closely related to the mantis shrimp. Some say it's related to worm-like crustaceans that live in aquatic caves. But nobody really knows the truth. Let's talk about its huge eyes for a minute. The Dolocaris had eyes that took up about a quarter of its body length. Researchers say each eyeball probably had about 18,000 lenses. It was able to see extraordinarily well, which probably would have made it an apex predator. It could have easily watched for any kind of movement going on around it, then flung out its long appendages to snag prey. This means the Dolocaris most likely spent the majority of its time floating through the darkest parts of the ocean, using its huge eyeballs to constantly search for food. The Albertosaurus The Albertosaurus is the lesser-known cousin of the T-Rex, a truly strange and monstrous creature that has an extensive fossil record. It's not as popular as the T-Rex, but so many bones have been found in the Canadian province of Alberta belonging to this ancient beast that scientists know a lot about it. First of all, it was a type of Tyrannosaur, just like the T-Rex, but it was half of the more popular dino size, coming in at only 30 feet from the top of its head to the tip of its tail. It also only weighed about 4,000 pounds. But even though the Albertosaurus was so small, it was still a killing machine. What it lacked in size, it made up with in speed and agility. It was way faster than the T-Rex. Plus, it may have hunted in packs. Since paleontologists have discovered so many specimens in the same spot, they believe the Albertosaurus lived in small groups as social animals. The Albertosaurus was the prehistoric version of the modern wolf. So what exactly did these dinosaurs hunt while they were marauding across the Canadian countryside in packs? Their favorite animals to eat were duck-billed dinosaurs such as the Edmontosaurus, named after the city of Edmonton, and the Lambiosaurus. Their hunting was actually great for the ecosystem since they chose the most vulnerable animals, getting rid of sick, old, and juvenile dinosaurs. Gorgonopsia at just 6 to 10 feet long, members of the extinct Gorgonopus genus were not exactly intimidating based on their size. Hailing from the Gorgonopsia suborder, these medium-sized therapsids ranked among the dominant predators of what is now South Africa during the late Permian, around 260 million years ago. Gorgonops rose to the top of the food chain thanks to its speed, viciousness, and massive canine teeth measuring up to 4 inches long, which came in handy for effortlessly penetrating prey. It also had the advantage of having legs that supported its weight from directly below, rather than sprawling out to the sides, like many creatures of its day, making for better speed and energy efficiency. One of the best studied Gorgonopsians is the Lycanops, an animal about 3 feet long whose name means wolf face. Like a wolf, it was long and slender with giant sharp teeth, similar to the saber-toothed cats so they could stab and tear at large prey. Gorgonopsians were wiped off the globe during the end Permian extinction around 252 million years ago. It was the most severe such event in the world's history, with little to no warning signs leading up to the massive and seemingly sudden die-off of 96% of the planet's marine species and around 70% of its terrestrial creatures. Thalato Archon Thalato Archon, a type of marine reptile called an ichthyosaur, lived around 240 
44 million years ago during the Triassic. This creature ate prey its own size and was about the size of a bus. Thalatoarchon sarophagus, which was discovered in Nevada in 1997, existed near the beginning of a long-lasting time span dominated by large apex marine predators. National Geographic calls it the first ruler of the Triassic Seas. Another mega-predator ichthyosaur was the 240-million-year-old Gizu ichthyosaurus, discovered in 2010. A 15-foot fossil was discovered with a 12-foot-long thalatosaur in its stomach. It was quite the mega predator of the ocean back in its day. But back to the Thalato Archon. Unlike most other ichthyosaurs who had simple conical teeth, the Lato Archon had double edged, blade like teeth, with its largest tooth measuring four inches long. Its teeth would be comparable to orcas or great whites today. It also had large eyes set into a large head, which was roughly twice as big in ratio to its body compared to other ichthyosaurs. The Lato Archon's formidable size and terrifying teeth likely ranked it as an apex predator among other ichthyosaurs during a time when land-dwelling reptiles were migrating to the seas in mass and adapting to marine life. It was especially well-suited to the sea, having emerged into existence just 8 million years after the world's worst-known mass extinction known as the End Permian Event. Scientists point toward the creature's adaptability as a sign that marine life bounced back impressively fast after the extinction compared to terrestrial life. After the event, the ocean was a pretty empty place, but apparently not for long, and ecosystems were intact by the time the ichthyosaur came around. The Lato Archon and its relatives thrived for 160 million years, but went extinct for unknown reasons. Liopleurodon The Liopleurodon genus of extinct marine reptiles encompassed two species that may very well qualify as some of the mightiest marine creatures of all time. These apex predators lived between 165 and 155 million years ago, during the late Jurassic period in what is now France, where there was once a shallow body of water perfect for the creature. The larger of the Liopleurodon species, L. ferox, reached an estimated 16 to 23 feet, with the largest known specimen likely measuring over 33 feet long. The species' weight probably ranged between 2,200 pounds and 3,700 pounds. It's difficult to definitively measure the creature's length, however, because researchers only have so much to work with in terms of fossilized remains. With four large, flipper-like limbs, the Liopleurodon was a strong swimmer that was capable of quickly accelerating, acting as a major advantage for the ambush predator when it came to pursuing prey. But these sea monsters were not infallible. The Liopleurodon and other pliosaurs ultimately lost the battle for survival to the Mosasaurs, a newer, more adept, and deadlier type of reptile. Phobiromus patersoni While prehistoric marine predators are terrifying for obvious reasons, it would be relatively easy to avoid one. After all, all you'd have to do is stay out of the water. But there may be no escaping from Phobiromus patersoni, one of the world's largest extinct rodents, which measured up to 9.8 feet long and weighed between 550 and 1,540 pounds, with a standing height of around 4.2 feet. Related to modern-day guinea pigs, the creature existed around 8 million years ago in South America's Orinoco Delta, which includes areas of Venezuela and Colombia. While this ratzilla was herbivorous, its appearance is nonetheless terrifying, especially especially to those who suffer from a phobia of rodents. There are also plenty of herbivores that can hurt you, like hippos and elephants, if they want to run you over. Just because they don't eat you doesn't mean they can't defend themselves. Like the modern-day capybara, P. Patersoni was semi-aquatic and likely foraged for food along riverbanks, according to University of Leeds researcher R. McNeil. While the creature's large size may seem abnormal to the average Joe, it confuses scientists for the exact opposite reason. The question that puzzles me is not how Phobiromus could have been so large, but why the overwhelming majority of rodents are so small, a researcher said. Seen from a distance, it would have looked much more like a buffalo than like a scaled-up guinea pig. Pliosaurus In 2012, scientists announced a newly named Jurassic-era marine reptile species, Pliosaurus funke, which swam through the world's oceans around 150 million years ago. Fossils of two specimens discovered in Svalbard, Norway, indicate that it was a massive apex predator during its time, possibly measuring around 40 feet long and equipped with a six and a half foot long skull that had four times the bite force of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Knowing exactly how big the creatures were is a difficult measurement to calculate because scientists only have incomplete and partial pliosaur skeletons to base their determinations off of. Plus, with such limited evidence to work from, it's equally difficult for experts to truly know the animal's bite force. 
The species' ferociousness remains rather clear, however. They were the top predators of the sea, study co-author Patrick Druckenmiller told Live Science. They had teeth that would have made a T-Rex whimper. Pliosaurus funke shared the ocean with other gigantic marine reptiles, including other pliosaurs, defined by their short necks, tear-shaped bodies, massive heads, and four flippers. Liviaton Melville Liviaton Melville was a legendary whale of prehistoric times that was a ferocious predator of the oceans. Growing to between 45 and 60 feet in length, these terrifying whales ate other whales and megalodons. Remains that have been found of Liviaton Melville show that it lived in the world's oceans about 13 million years ago during the Miocene epoch. During that time, the ocean was full of huge and varied species that provided the Liviaton with plenty to feast on. It would, however, have had a mighty foe in the waters in the form of the Megalodon. It is believed that these creatures overlapped at some point and lived at around the same time. The Megashark was a similar size to the Liviaton, and while it's thought unlikely that the two would have hunted each other often, it's quite possible that they came up against one another in the pursuit of prey. Most experts think that the Liviaton would have come out victorious if this ever happened. They had giant teeth about 15 inches long, perfectly placed for grabbing and ripping out flesh. T. rex teeth in comparison would reach up to 12 inches, saber-tooth teeth grew to 11 inches, and the largest megalodon teeth that have ever been found are just under 8 inches long. Sarcosuchus Even the most gargantuan modern crocodilians would look small next to Sarcosuchus, the largest crocodile that ever roamed the earth. It lived in northern Africa during the early Cretaceous period, between 133 and 112 million years ago, a time when the Sahara Desert was tropical and lush with vegetation and numerous rivers and water bodies. Nicknamed the Super Croc, this prehistoric reptile grew continuously throughout its lifetime, with the biggest specimens reaching a length of up to 40 feet and weighing as much as 10 tons. As an apex predator, Sarcosuchus was capable of snapping the neck of Spinosaurus, the largest terrestrial carnivorous dinosaur of the time, leaving it with no shortage of food despite sharing its habitat with many other ancient super-sized reptiles. It subsisted mostly on fish, however, and it was probably rare for a super croc to feast on a dinosaur, but hey, who knows? Sarcosuchus was a philidosaur, a prehistoric type of reptile that went extinct millions of years ago for unclear reasons, making it a distant relative of today's crocodilians. Mosasaurus Mosasaurs are an extinct group of aquatic reptiles that roamed the planet alongside the dinosaurs during the late Cretaceous period, between 82 and 66 million years ago. They're not exactly dinosaurs, and they were extremely deadly. These unforgiving marine monsters drove at least one other reptile group, the ichthyosaurs, to extinction extinction by outcompeting them for food, and they may have played a role in eradicating plesiosaurs and pliosaurs. Their fossils often appear inland, where bodies of waters once existed, including the interior Great Sea, which covered a large portion of the American Midwest. Mosasaurus, the largest of the mosasaurs, measured up to 60 feet long and weighed up to 15 tons, although experts are unsure of its exact size range. It had a ferocious set of teeth, ideal for shredding prey like fish, birds and other marine reptiles, and a second set of teeth further inside its mouth, acting as a secondary safeguard to stop prey from escaping in the moments before they were devoured. Resembling a crocodile with fins, the Mosasaurus was a top predator in the waters of its day. But like other prehistoric creatures before them, Mosasaurs were not immune to competition. The creatures were wiped out in the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event that killed all the dinosaurs. But if this hadn't happened, it's believed that their downfall may have otherwise been large perpetuated by faster, more vicious, and smarter ancient sharks like the Jinsu shark. These sharks would later evolve to include the enormous megalodon. Terror birds Terror birds emerged into existence around 60 million years ago, before Central America formed and when South America was an island, and roughly 5 million years after the extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. This family of carnivorous, flightless birds encompassed 17 species, which ranked among the region's largest apex predators, ranging in height from 3 to 10 feet. Included among the scariest terror birds was the Brontornis genus, 
Venus, which grew to 9.2 feet tall and weighed between 770 and 880 pounds. Terror birds are best known for their large, sharp beaks, which were capable of inflicting sufficient damage by pecking or stabbing something really hard with enough power to sever a spinal cord. They also had piercing talons, which they used for kicking and holding down prey as they ripped their guts out. BBC reports that Titanus was as big and fast as an ostrich, with feet that could snap the femur of a cow. A peck from this bird could knock your head off. They were at the top of the food chain in South America for tens of millions of years, and then everything changed. Terror birds declined and eventually went extinct, following the emergence of the Isthmus of Panama around 2.7 million years ago, which connected North and South America and enabled other predators like bears, wolves, and toothed cats to come into their territory and hunt them. The Scylosaurus Between 41.3 and 33.9 million years ago during the late Eocene epoch, a prehistoric whale genus called Basilosaurus lived throughout the Tethys Sea and other water bodies of the ancient world. These early marine mammals were members of a primitive group of cetaceans called Archaeoceti and were top predators in their environments. There are two known Basilosaurus species. Fossils of one species, B. cetoides, were first discovered along the U.S. Gulf Coast, with others being found in the eastern U.S. Evidence of the second species, B. isis, has appeared in North Africa, including Jordan, Egypt, Morocco, and Tunisia, and possibly even Antarctica. Basilosaurus was perhaps the largest creature of its time period, reaching up to 60 feet long, with a 3-foot-long skull that had a bite force comparable to a T-Rex. The study of the ancient whale's stomach contents revealed that it was, indeed, a formidable and fearsome force in its habitat, feasting on fish and sharks measuring up to 20 inches long. Bite marks on the skull fossils of smaller whales also bear evidence that Basilosaurus preyed on other cetaceans, including specimens from the Dorodon genus. Basilosaurus likely went extinct around 34 million years ago during the Eocene Oligocene extinction event, which was small compared to some of history's other extinctions, but saw the eradication of many marine creatures, including the last surviving Archaeoceti. Chronosaurus with specimens measuring 30 to 36 feet long and weighing between 7 and 10 tons, the extinct Chronosaurus genus encompassed some of the prehistoric world's largest pliosaurs, a fearsome type of dinosaur with a short neck, large head, broad body, and massive toothed jaws. Members of this genus inhabited early Cretaceous waters between 120 and 100 million years ago. There were two known species, including K. Queenslandicus, found in New South Wales and Queensland, Australia, as well is K. boyacensis, which was discovered in Colombia. However, scientists believe that Chronosaurus may have had a worldwide presence and that its remains simply haven't been discovered on other continents yet. Chronosaurus was one of the deadliest marine reptiles that ever existed. It was closely related to the Liopleurodon, with the two bearing striking similarities despite existing some 40 million years apart. Like its earlier relative, Chronosaurus had deceptively sharp-looking teeth. In reality, the animal's power came from its powerful bite, which enabled it to shake and crush prey to death in its mouth, as well as its fast swimming speed. Chronosaurus fed on fellow marine reptiles, including members of the Aeromangosaurus genus, as evidenced by fossils containing the predator's bite marks. Pliosaurs, in general, were severely weakened by the evolution of creatures better suited to survive in their habitat, including sharks, and a reptile family known as the Mosasaurus. By the time the mass extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs rolled around roughly 65 million years ago, pliosaurs were virtually eradicated from the planet. Thanks for watching! Which creature was your favorite? Do you still think the Megalodon was the scariest? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already! See you later! Bye!